Hey guys, just before the video starts, a quick reminder that due to the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program, your subscriptions are going to be even more important than before. So if you appreciate or like the content, please subscribe to the channel. The faster we hit the 1000 subscribers, the faster I'll be able to deliver co continuous content to you guys. So now, let's move on to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to be looking at another budget cooler, the Gamax S40 from Deepcool. It's another sub $30 cooler and it has a particular a design in the uh, aluminum fin stack, which is the double channel design, which is supposed to help you uh, cool, redirect the airflow to cool down the other components in your system. Uh, we tested it on an open test bench, so what we're going to look at is to see if this cooler can outperform what we've already looked at in the sub $30 category, and if it's a worthwhile pickup for you guys, or are there better options out there? So keep tuned and let's start by taking an overview of what the cooler is offering. The Gamax S40 features a standard tower cooler design with four six millimeter nickel plated copper heat pipes. It also comes equipped with a 120 millimeter PWM compatible fan with a max RPM of 1600. As uh, Deepcool is saying, it comes with a double airflow design in its aluminum fin stack, which is supposed to help redirect the airflow to the other components in your system. The good news is the Gamax S40 has a universal compatibility with all modern sockets, Intel and AMD, including AM4, and that's right out of the box, no adapter or extra kit needed. The overall dimensions of the cooler is it stands basically 143 millimeters tall. It's 120 millimeters wide and 81.3 millimeters thick. So now that we have a good idea of what the cooler is offering, let's take a look at the results. Let's take a look at the numbers, how the cooler performed compared to other coolers we've tested so far. So before we get to that, let's go over the methodology that I use really quickly. So all the coolers are tested on my Ryzen 3 1200 test bench system, which is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz and it uses 1.3 volts to hit that overclock. All my results are also uh, shown in delta temperatures, meaning that it's the temperatures above whatever the room temperature is at. At the same time, I use the exact same thermal paste for all my testing, which is Arctic MX4. Uh, so basically all coolers are compared using as, you know, as close to the same parameters as I can. At the same time, for all the noise testing, I use my portable sound meter, which is placed exactly two feet away from the motherboard and basically gives a simulation of someone who games with their tower on their desk. You know, your tower's beside you, you're about two feet away from it, and you're gaming. So it should give you as close to what you should expect to hear when this cooler is running at 100%, because the fan speed is always locked as well at 100. So these are theoretically worst case results, but at the same time, if you're pushing your system to the max, you'll know what you're getting with the way I test. So without further ado, Let's get to some of the numbers and let's start with the temperature. So this chart should be up on the screen right now. And the Gamax S40 gave a result of 28 degrees above ambient. So basically at 28 degrees, it doesn't place it as the best cooler. However, it does place it, place it at the front of the pack. So it's in the first half of the graph you're looking at, but at the same time, it is not the best you can get performance for the coolers we've tested so far. At the same time, um, if we switch over really quickly to the noise results, which should be on the screen now, uh, the cooler performed at 48 decibels, placing it uh, a little further up the graph than it did on the temperature. So it's really not the quietest cooler we've tested so far, but at the same time, it's showing up, you know, it's giving a decent result, basically. It's not the worst cooler we've tested either uh, so far. So overall, where does this place the S40? Well, unfortunately, it places the S40 in an odd position because based on the results, there are just better options out there for the moment. However, the cooler performance is okay. Basically, if you want my honest opinion, 
If I were aiming at under $30 and I wanted the best performing cooler, well, if you look at the charts, uh, it's basically the Gamax 400. It's the best performing cooler. And at the same time, let's say I wasn't willing to endure the LEDs that come with the Gamax, S4, the Gamax 400, well, then I would aim at the Thermaltake Contact 12, which is probably the overall quietest and without LEDs, one of my favorite coolers. So it places the S40, like I said, just in an odd position because basically between 20 and $30, Deep Cool has over four different models. And at the same time, it almost cannibalized, it's almost cannibalized by the Gamax 300. The Gamax 300 is on average five to $10 cheaper because this cooler, by the way, is sold generally somewhere between 20 and $30. The normal MSRP here in Canada is $30, but you can regularly find it closer to 20. Meaning in the US, you can probably shave $5 off those prices. You can probably find it between 15 and $25 if you chase the deals. Now, as I said, uh, it places it in an odd position because if I was going for pure, pure budget performance, like the cheapest cooler, but can fit, you know, all the way up to, let's say a Ryzen, you know, 1700, I would go with the Gamax 300. If I was looking for all out top performance, I would go with the Gamax 400. And if I was looking for something that didn't have an LED or that was the quietest cooler I could find, I would go with the Thermaltake Contact 12. So the S40 doesn't really, you know, take a special place. It's not the quietest, it's not the best performance, and at the same time the whole idea of redirecting the airflow to cool down your other components, I'll be honest with you, they haven't sold me on it. Like I tried to test or see how much airflow it was directing in, in, other, in other directions, and if you have decent case fans, it's not going to be a slight bit of airflow directed from your CPU cooler that's going to change anything on your graphics card or that's going to change anything on your VRMs. Uh, if you have decent overall airflow in your case, uh, a little bit of extra, you know, air redirected from a CPU cooler is not going to make, in my opinion, any type of real difference. I could be wrong. If you're in a climate where like every little bit of airflow you need it, Maybe it can change something for you, but I'm not sold on the idea personally. I didn't like when you when I tested with like pieces of paper off on the sides to see how much airflow was getting off on the sides. It, it hardly moved the pieces of paper. So unfortunately, it was really, you know, I was disappointed basically in that result. But overall, Deepcool has given another solid product. I'm not saying it's bad for under 30 bucks. You're getting your money's worth. It's just that unfortunately there's better options and two of those better options actually come from Deep Cool themselves. So the S40 for me would be a pass. Like if you're looking between 20 and 30, I would go with one of the other three coolers I suggested. But at the same time, if you bought the S40 or if the S40 is the only cooler that you that is currently like really on, you know, on a big sale or whatnot, go for it. It's not a bad cooler whatsoever. You're getting slightly better performance than the Gamax 300, although for five or 10 bucks more on average. And at the same time, you, it, it compares very much in performance to the Contact 12. However, it's noisier. So that's my thoughts on the Gamax S40. I hope for any of you out there that were looking at purchasing it, my the information is gonna help you. As usual, I hope you guys appreciated my review. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. And more content should be coming to you very quickly. I have two other coolers that are being tested as we speak. So I'll see you guys in my next video.